Well, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, a very good morning. Uh, I'm very excited to be here with all of you at Utah Car Park. Come on, um, tell me, how's everybody doing? Good, okay. How many of you are here because of me? Oh, not too bad. And how do I look today? Fantastic, this is what I want to hear. Well, today I'm going to talk about say what you mean and mean what you say. Uh, are you able to do it? Honestly. Okay, let's take a look. Go back to the three questions that I have just asked. How's everybody today? Great, great. Yes, some of you may be, but some deep down inside, hello, it's a Sunday morning. Oh, it's the only morning that I can slip in. Or maybe wake up at 2 p.m. Ah, oh, talk, 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 but I got so much to talk. Okay, it could be, right? My second question, um, how many of you are here because of me? Again, hey, what happened to you? Because I still remember my first production was back in year 2000. I bet you were just only one year or two years old, right? Yeah, so I bet your parents probably know me better than you do. <laughs> okay, number three. How do I look today? Fantastic, thank you. Some of you may think, yes, it's fantastic. But some of you like, I don't care. Just tell me something interesting. Correct or not? So, <laughs> that shows that most of the people actually don't say what they mean or don't mean what they say. Do you agree? Why? It happens every day. Why? One needs to say something you really mean or mean something you really say. Why is it so difficult? Because it happens every day. Now, look. This is a behavioral style. It shows that only 18%, the red portion, only 18% of the population will show favor on um, assertiveness or dealing things head on, which means they are daring. They dare to say what they mean and they dare to uh, mean what they say, but that's only 80%. For the rest of the 82%, they tend to shrink away from conflicts. Oh, I better keep quiet or I better say something that I, I don't really mean. Now, it happens every day, number one. Culture. We talk about Western culture. Hey, how are you? What's your answer? A usual, a normal answer, the most popular answer. How are you? Fine, thanks. But are you really fine? Maybe you have just lost your job. Maybe you have huge credit card debt you don't know how to settle. Maybe your boyfriend just stopped you, but you say, I'm fine, thank you, right? Because this is a usual behavior, it's nice. And if someone asks you, how are you, how do you do, they don't expect an answer from you, hey, I'm very bad now. And they were like, uh, what happened? So again, we, do, we say something that we don't really mean it. And Chinese culture as well. Remember when you were seven, eight years old, you were a very good boy, you got good grades, and um, you won a lot of awards, and you're well behaved, very polite, and you're like a role model to a lot of people. Then some relatives or some aunties came to your house, told your mom, Wow, your sons are your sons very good, oh, it's so good. I wish my son can be yours. And then your, what would your mother say? I know, you know, you, you, you did see when he's very naughty. Yeah, yeah, same, 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 same. You see? What the mother can say, thank you very much. That's something that she really means. But because of culture, culture will make us say some, something that we don't mean it. Now, second, slang. Who doesn't understand Cantonese here? 
You don't understand? Okay, uh, maybe you have your friend next to you to translate for you. Um, slang will make us say something that we don't really mean it. For example, how do you ask somebody to get lost in Chinese? It's all. But Thai, in Cantonese, we have an expression very powerful. Let me say it up. Right? It should be like you, you go to die. It's a direct translation. But do we mean that you know you want a person to die? No, you just want him to get lost, right? Let's say that. But if the person who doesn't understand our culture or our slang, he will be like, oh no, what have I done to deserve this curse from you that I need to go to hell, right? So this is a, 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 one example. And another one, also in Cantonese, uh, when you are in a discussion, but you are not very satisfied with the outcome. You want to cut it short. For example, um, hey, hello, it's not like this. Uh, don't do this to me, please. In Cantonese, we have a saying, right? We always say that, but you call, the person is not your brother. Yeah. My husband um, is from English education. So that was once we were in a discussion, we were like, uh, okay, we could not come up to a, a mutually agreed solution. So I was like, okay, thank, 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 stop. <laughs> Don't get so serious, I know. You know what my husband said? I'm your husband. You don't call me brother. I don't know. Don't be so serious. So it's the, the slang will make us say something that we don't really mean it. So what else? Vocabulary. When someone runs out of vocabulary, you also will say something that you don't really mean it. Okay. Certain English words appear in Malaysia at a very, very high frequency. For example, uh, how's the food? Nice. How's the weather? Nice. How's the movie? Nice. Everything nice. Uh, but how's the food? You can say it's delicious, it's yummy, right? How's the weather? Oh, it's a sunny day, it's a rainy day, it's gloomy. And how's the movie? Very enjoyable. But we tend to use nice, nice, everything nice. <laughs> and give me the second word. Very, very high frequency. Actually, actually, when I was young, I wanted to study in Utah. So where are you studying now? Utah? No, no, no but act, you said actually you wanted to study in Utah. So that means you are not studying Utah now? No, I'm studying Utah. Can't you see me here in Utah? Kampala campus? Oh, actually, I don't, I, actually, I don't really understand your actually. Because actually, you don't need to use actually. <laughs> so this is vocabulary. Number four. Attention. Most of the time we don't say things we mean because we are not paying attention. For example, your friend says, Hey, I'm hungry, I need some food. You know your friend is saying something, but you are on your phone, okay, you know, WhatsApp, you know, whatever you're doing. And you know he's saying something and you know he's expecting an answer from you. You're like, Oh, read, you see? And then your friend will go, Yes. I'm a normal human being. When I am hungry, I will need some food. Again, we don't say what we mean. Another scenario, um, uh, let me think. Uh, yes, who is very bad in memorizing people's names? Raise your hand. Why? Don't know. Bad memory. If you are very young, if I have got bad memory, I know, I understand, right? Yeah. Usually, in um, social and business arena, yes, it's very common that you are uh, very bad in you know, uh, remembering names. You saw that person and I'm like... Oh. <laughs> Therefore, these words will appear. Hi, dear, honey, babe. Is it? When you, whenever you hear honey, dear, babe, it goes to you forget their names. Right? They are not your babe, they are not your honey, they are not your dear, but because when they were introducing themselves, you were not paying attention at all. So attention, no attention equals to babe, dear, and uh, saying something that we don't really mean it.
Okay? So next time when people introduce themselves, what you need to do? Pay attention. Okay? Now, another scenario that will make us say something that we don't really mean it, messy thoughts. I always, um, you know, some, I do a lot of uh, feng shui and uh, Chinese metaphysics uh, studies. A lot of people ask me, hey, feng shui, I want to be very rich. I'm like, how do you define rich? 10 million? Okay, but you're making 2,000 per month. It is very hard for you to work for other people to earn the 10 million. So I told them, it's okay, change. You don't work for others, you start your own business. <laughs> you cannot, you know, I don't know how to do business. It's okay, if you don't know how to do business, you learn. How to learn? Number one, you sleep two hours less every day. Uh, you go to take up a course how, on how to do business. And number three, you volunteer yourself to your boss. Those jobs which are not under your scope, don't worry, go to do it because that, this is how you gain experience. And you know what the common answers are? Ah, slept two hours less. I cannot, you know, I'm different from you, Julie. I cannot think if I sleep two hours less. And then, okay, how about think of a course? I have just graduated from uh, Utah Kampa. You want me to study more? I think enough is enough. Okay, now, number three, how about you volunteer yourself to your boss? He didn't pay me extra, so I'm not doing it. Remember, the first line is, I want to be very rich. No, you are not going to be very rich, and you don't mean what you say because you have messy thoughts. Okay, lastly, lies. Am I fat? He also doesn't look good. Equal to you are fat. Okay. Um, do I look old? This is called sophisticated. Equal to you are old. <laughs> now, I, we understand why the, the, the key reason is we never learn. It's not really taught in schools and it's not practiced at home as well. School, I don't know now. During my generation, I don't I didn't dare to give negative opinions to my teachers because I know there are extra consequences that I need to bear, right? That's why I didn't do. And at home, Chinese, one word, damn. Before you open your mouth, damn. Okay, so we cannot see what we really need. And at work, don't you dare to say something against your boss or your client. So we better say something that we don't really mean it. And social media. Remember your last posting, what was that? And what is it about? When you were doing that posting, what was on your mind? Were you hoping that you have a lot more likes or more followers? Then you tend to give along that echo, ended up saying or post posting something that you don't really mean it. Now, all these uh, will make us fail to model good communication. Then, what to do? Now, i give you some simple steps. If we really want to see what we mean and mean what we say, number one, you ask yourself, is it necessary for you to say so? For example, someone, attend, uh, someone attended an event and she, did, uh, she doesn't dress to the occasion. Do I need to open my mouth? Sometimes I don't need to. And before you give your opinion, did you ask permission? Is it the right time for me to share my opinions with you? Number three, always remember what they want. That person didn't dress to the occasion. Maybe she had some hiccup on the way to the hotel. Maybe she really wants to stand up from the rest. You don't care, okay? So always think for them. And then number four, remember what is our intended outcome. We want that person to be more aware of the dress code or you just want to make her feel bad you are very ugly. <laughs> okay, so this is the intended outcome. And then be specific. If you want to give an opinion, you can be more specific instead of you are very ugly. Um, the lace on your dress looks more like 20s rather than 70s, so this is called specific. 
constructive ideas, right? And lastly, leave it open-ended. After you give an opinion, what do you think? You throw the, um, the ball back to her court and you have a very, very soft closing. So these are the steps that we can learn to make our speech or whatever we want to deliver more genuine. Say what we mean and be what we say. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Wong, for an inspiring speech.